Hey everyone. Okay, so I just had to do this, a second vlog on the Holy Spirit um, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So call us 12.5. Um, yeah, 12 and a half. Um, okay, so the last vlog I did, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and um, why it is necessary that we be baptized with the Holy Spirit and how we get baptized, right? So um, everywhere you look through the New Testament, right? Baptism in water and baptism in the spirit go hand in hand. Um, very rarely, if anywhere, do you see people just getting baptized in water. Um, except those who were baptized in the baptism of John. Okay, so this was before they'd heard about Jesus or um, while Jesus was still living. Right, because like I read in the in the blog before, blog before um, Jesus had to go to heaven in order for the Holy Spirit to come. And then once Jesus had gone, the Holy Spirit had come, then people could be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> but you always saw people being baptized in water and then baptized in the Holy Spirit, okay? And a lot of times it was at the same time. So, who can baptize, right? Okay, so say if anybody is ever listening to these and you haven't been baptized in water, um get baptized in water. Um, I think a lot of times, I don't know if it, where this stemmed from, the Catholic Church or wherever, because Protestantism came from Catholicism, um, believe it or not, whether you like that or not, that's the reality of it, um, where I'm sure that they had special baptismal services for people who wanted to get baptized. But for those who have heard the gospel and want baptism, like, the gospel is like, oh my gosh, I need this. I need to be, I need to get saved. I need Jesus. Um, get baptized right away. Don't wait. Um, there is nowhere in the Bible that says a pastor has to baptize you. There you go. Uh, that's the truth. There's nowhere that says the, that says a pastor has to baptize you. In fact, okay, I'll read this now. Uh, in Mark chapter 16, verse... Um, 15, Jesus said, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature of the whole human race. He who believes, who adheres to and trusts and relies on the gospel and him who sets it forth and is baptized will be saved from the penalty of eternal death. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust and rely on the holy or the gospel and him whom it sets forth will be condemned, and these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new languages, they will pick up serpents, and even if they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will get well. Okay, so Jesus said that to the, to the disciples. And he also said in another, uh, I don't know if it's in Matthew, or I think it was my Mark, he said, um, he said, greater things will you do because I'm going to the Father, and my Father will send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Advocate. Um, but Jesus says, greater things will you do than even what I've done, right? And how do we do that? We do it through the Holy Spirit and through his power, right? Um, none of the disciples would have been able to heal people, to um, go through the the stuff that they had to go through without the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives um, because they went through a lot of persecution the dreaded P word um, you know they went through some serious persecution uh, and I don't know how they would have gotten through that if they hadn't had and been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so um, if you're a new believer and you're listening to this and you haven't been baptized in water yet Find somebody, find another believer who has a bathtub, or if you have a bathtub, or I've seen it done, you can get a big bin lorry or a garbage can. Um, anything where you can get fully submersed, um, or a swimming pool, like a leisure center, or, you know, something like that. That's even more awesome, because then people can watch it, and it's a testimony, right? And people will come up and say, what, what are you doing? You know, and then you can share the gospel. Happy days. So... You don't have to wait until there, there's a baptismal service, and it doesn't have to be done by a pastor. There, he said to the disciples, you know, um, some of them ended up being teachers, some of them ended up being missionaries and evangelists and apostles and blah, 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 you know. They're no different than us. Um, and in fact, 
like on the day of Pentecost, like 3,000 people came to the Lord. And there's no way that it was only Peter that was baptizing people or, you know, only certain people. Like you make disciples to make disciples to make disciples, right? And so if you're a disciple of Jesus, then you can baptize people in water and you can lay your hands and, uh, and they can receive the Holy Spirit, right? It's not rocket science. Thank God he makes it really simple for us, you know? Um, and he really does. God is, even in all his majesty and mystery, you know, <laughs> we'll never understand him in this life, but he makes things so simple for us because he knows us, right? And we have to approach him like a child. That's what Jesus said. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are like a child, right? Which means you don't, you don't come in with your own smartness or, oh, I know this, I know that. No, he says, no, you gotta, you gotta humble yourself and come as a child. Why? Because your brains will not impress me. You know, you need my salvation. Um, and everything that we have in Christ is because of him. We do nothing of our own merit. We do nothing. Paul says, there is, I can boast in nothing but Jesus and what he's done for me, right? We have n no, n nothing to boast about um, in and of ourselves. So it takes the faith of a child to receive, to ask the Holy Spirit to come and to fill us, right? So find somebody and get baptized and then ask them to, to lay their hands on you. Or if you're listening to this and you've been baptized and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, stick your hand you don't even have to stick your hands up you know it doesn't say it anywhere about sticking your hands up but you can just hold your hands out and say holy spirit i want to receive you everything that you have fill me now in jesus name you know and one of the evidences of being filled with the holy spirit is new languages right um because paul talks about um praying in the spirit i think i've said the i've said the verse on the last one pray at all times in the spirit Okay, pray continuously in the spirit. Now, I don't think Paul would have said that if it was only for certain people because he was writing to a church. And if it was only for certain people, then he probably would have said, oh, only if you have the gift, pray in the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't. He says it as a general uh, advice, like as general advice, pray in the spirit at all times. Okay, so I believe, I personally believe that everybody can speak tongues speak in tongues um i believe that the holy spirit that is one of the main evidences that you have the holy spirit is that you can speak in tongues how do you speak in tongues well uh i think it's quite simple sometimes us as adults have a hard time wrapping our heads around it because we want to understand it with our brains but it's not a fleshly thing it's not an earth thing it's a kingdom thing it's a spirit thing so what is even speaking in tongues it is the holy spirit communicating with the father through the son right well maybe not even through the son either not just communicate through the son they're all on great speaking terms um so it's the holy spirit interceding on our behalf right he's speaking the bible says that the, the spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words right because we do not know how to pray for ourselves um and i wish i knew the chapter and verse for that but I don't but that's okay because it's in there we do not know how to pray for ourselves so the Holy Spirit when we pray in tongues prays for us and when we pray in the spirit which is praying in tongues we edify ourselves okay we don't we don't actually do it the Holy Spirit in us edifies ourselves because we don't know how to pray for ourselves properly am I saying that you know Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't pray in English at all. Maybe God, you know. No, no. God wants to hear you. God wants to hear what's in your heart. But that's why he knows we need as much help as we can get. So the Holy Spirit prays for us, right? And that's what Paul's talking about. Pray in the Spirit at all times. Under your breath, when you're driving to work, pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. Uh, when you're, you know, having a hard day, pray in tongues under your breath. You can pray out loud, whatever. Um, but do it. Um, so how do you pray in tongues? Okay, literally, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you got to just open your mouth, okay? It's it's really simple and childlike, okay? You have to not worry about looking like an idiot. Do it by yourself if you want. Go into your room and say, okay, Holy Spirit, give me my spiritual language, please. You know, and then you actually physically need to open your mouth because he's not going to go, 
okay, I'll open your mouth. Blah. You know, he's not, he doesn't do that, right? But we open our mouths and just start to move your tongue and just shikara kayasema and, and just let whatever, whatever comes out, come out, okay? It's not about you. It's about him. So don't, think you're an idiot don't be like oh it's not it was me it wasn't the holy spirit it was me i was moving it yeah of course you're moving your mouth because you have to that's how it comes out you know he's you and him are working together in this thing so he does his part you do your part and you just simply open your mouth and don't worry about what he's saying or what's coming out of your mouth you know why because it's not for you to understand it's not for you to interpret for yourself when you're praying in the spirit by yourself for yourself it's not for you to interpret Okay, so don't worry about what's coming out of your mouth. Some people sound like Chinese people. Some people sound like really African. Some people sound Jewish. Some people, I mean, tongues sound different to, with everybody, right? So who knows what yours will sound like. But it doesn't matter because the more you do it, the easier it becomes and you will know it's the Holy Spirit, right? We are so thick-minded as adults because we just want what we want when we want it we want to be able to do it right away we don't want to have to kind of fumble through it but that's not how children learn and if we're called to be childlike we have to do it the way children learn Le children don't learn to walk in a day I have a one-year-old he's still walking like Frankenstein and he's been walking for like a month month and a half and he still walks like Frankenstein one day he'll stop and he'll walk normally you know but he's learning he's learning his balance he's learning how to you know that he can actually go as far as he goes, you know, but he's learning and he, you don't, I don't see him getting all frustrated with himself and, oh, why can't I do this? Oh, I should be able to do this by now. No, no, because he's just like, okay, this is new. Great. I'm just going to keep doing this until whatever. Yeah. God is the same way. He, he does not have a stopwatch or, t or, or a watch on his wrist and he's not sitting there going, you should be able to do this by now. Come on. Hurry up. You know, he's not, he is not on a timeline. We are on the timeline. And he will give us the grace to do whatever we need to do. So when it comes to speaking in tongues, right, take your time. Don't be in a rush. You know, just, it will sound like gibberish. Like even when babies learn to talk, you don't, they don't all of a sudden say, good morning, greetings and salutations, mother. You know, like they start off going, Da, 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 da. eventually it becomes da da and then eventually it becomes daddy or ma 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 you know and it takes them a long time to be able to even form words even to understand what those words mean right so why are we so impatient with ourselves when god is so willing to be patient with us okay so as you as when the holy spirit comes into your life he will lead you he will guide you direct you and you will be able to do these things okay so if you know somebody who hasn't been baptized in water or in the holy spirit say to them say here have you been baptized you need to be baptized let's baptize you you know and find a garbage bin find a bathtub and get them in there full immersion right because then they come out a new creation it, do, it is not strictly down to pastors or baptismal services right this was an everyday occurrence for the believer and the disciple of Jesus. They just, because they didn't even have bathtubs back in the day. They just probably used rivers and lakes and whatever. So, and, and you don't see anything in there where they had a baptismal service. Now, no offense to people who have baptismal services who got baptized at a baptismal service. That's great. Awesome. You know, I hope it was awesome for you. Um, but all I'm saying is sometimes we get into this way of thinking this box where oh no I can't I can't do this until the pastor baptizes me or I'm not really baptized unless a pastor baptizes me guys we're called to be ambassadors of Christ we are all called high priests um, because of what Jesus did for us because we are covered in the blood we've been set free from our sin we can therefore go and do these things that Jesus said okay so get out of that mindset um, and get baptized in water get baptized in the Holy Spirit and start walking in power and being led by the Spirit of God. Wow, what a difference it makes. You will, man, blows, mind blowing, totally mind blowing, you know? Um, so yeah, be blessed, have a great day, and I'll be back soon, no doubt.